Closing time for Husky Stadium, and the Ducks ushered out the era in style, ringing up the dogs for their eighth straight in the series, and now the Cardinal awaits. Speaking of the Cardinal, they survived a rainy Saturday at Reeser. Andrew Luck and Stanford persevere in the rain and ensuring that the Beavers will be home for the holidays. At the Rose Bowl, the Bruins went big against the Devils, and a crucial miscue has given UCLA new life. In Boulder, Matt Barkley made Friday Night Lights his own personal party with a mountain fresh six pack. By the Bay, the Bears are inching ever closer towards bowl eligibility and they threw another shovel of dirt on the hopes of the Cougs. And in Tucson, the Utes weren't about to pack it in against the Cats and got defensive about it. The month of November is finally here and so is this edition of Inside the Pack. Shotgun set, two wide receivers to the short side here on the left, and Price to throw, flips to the middle, now checks it down, comes to the near side, and this ball is ripped away from the receiver. Hartvigson just picked clean at the 30-yard line. Larceny in the middle of the field, Oregon with the takeaway. Larceny indeed. The Oregon defense specializes in pressure and takeaways in the final game at Old Husky Stadium. Hello and welcome to another edition of Inside the Pack. I am Tom Ward. He is Nick Krupke and our special guest this week, former Portland State running back and defensive back Kevin Leonard. Kevin, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, these night games are tough and tough turnaround, and they were certainly tough on the dogs last night as the Ducks defense really played its best game of the season. The Huskies thought they had closed the gap, but uh, maybe Oregon gave them other ideas. Yeah, way too much explosiveness from Oregon. Oregon's defense way too uh, strong and, and just too athletic for them. Yeah, they really, I think, wore the opponent down again in this game with the 212 yards rushing. Right, didn't have an answer for it. Um, Washington tried to run a bunch of stunts. It didn't work, and they just didn't have it that night. And the dog fans kind of had to go home, I guess, with uh, sort of a bad taste in their mouth. In Corvallis, Nick, speaking of bad taste, the Beavers, once again, with a, a game right there for the taking, I guess, again, turned on a couple of plays. Yeah, Mike Rowley says, hey, through time, have you seen Andrew Luck? Time for him to go away and go into the NFL <laughs> yeah. with some bottom feeder out there. But for Beaver fans, you look at a couple of plays. Yeah, 38-13, that final score, but you're in it. Down 14-7, Poyer, a great play. You jar the ball loose, you score the touchdown, wiped off helmet to helmet. We'll talk about that. Plus, in the third quarter, it's a real close game still, too. And then you get the big pass play to Brandon Cooks. Right. Nope, you got holding on Wheaton, comes back. They can't convert on third down, and from there, luck of the Cardinal took over. Yeah, paper-thin margin for the Beavers this year. Now they are out of bowl contention. It is their seventh loss of the season, and we'll get to them in just a minute. But as the biggest out-of-state rivalry in the Pac-12, the Ducks have owned the Dogs the past decade, entering Saturday having won seven in a row, but Washington still with the all-time series lead by 18 games. After 91 plus years, this was the final contest at Old Husky Stadium. And UW hoping a $250 million renovation project will get the program up to an elite level with Oregon. Opening drive for the Huskies, it went the other way. Eddie Pleasant picks off Keith Price in the middle of the field. Second pick of the year in as many games for Eddie. Duck ball at the Washington 38. It took just three plays to capitalize. In less than a minute, well, Michael James, the rust gone from a week earlier. An 18-yard touchdown, 156 yards rushing for LaMike. After a UW field goal following a Darren Thomas fumble, DeAnthony Thomas explodes on the kickoff return. Return one for a TD last week and nearly did on this one. 69-yard return to the 21, tripped up. That set up a 40-yard field goal by Alejandro Maldonado, 10-3 Ducks. Second quarter, more Husky miscues. Eddie Pleasant, the price is wrong, Bobby. And a big return for Pleasant, 49 yards as he takes it back the other way before being pushed out at the Washington 23. More prime real estate for the Ducks, and that led to this. Four plays later, DT to David Paulson, playing in front of his friends and family from nearby Auburn. Four yards, make it 17-3 Ducks. Final minute of the first half. The Dogs, though, hold closer. Price to Michael Hart gets done. The half-yard line. 17-10 Oregon at the half is a 45-yard field goal from Maldonado was short. First drive of the third, Oregon goes 90 yards. Kenyon Barner plugs in from a yard out, make it 24-10. But the Huskies respond. Heck of an effort right here. Kaysen Williams, watch this catch. Keeps his foot inbounds. 10-yard score from Keith Price. 25th touchdown toss of the season. 
It's only a seven point lead for Oregon, 24-17. Darren Thomas, 13 to 25, 169 yards and the one TD. He found Paulson three times, this was huge, on third down for 34 yards down to the Husky 35. Oregon with 381 total yards of offense. The fake to LaMike, but the pitch to DAT, the Quack Mamba. Nine yard touchdown for DeAnthony Thomas, extends his freshman school record with 12 scores, 31-17. Kudos to that duck defense, which pressured Price all night. Six sacks, they forced three turnovers as Oregon collects its 18th straight conference win and eight straight over Washington, 34-17. That's Oregon's eighth straight in the series. And the Mike with his first 100-yard rushing game in a month, an average of 6.2 per carry. Oregon on the ground, 212 yards to Washington's 82 as Chris Polk never got it going. The Ducks' final three-game push now towards that inaugural Pac-12 title game goes through Stanford before USC and the Beavers come to Otson. Well, Kevin, once again, the offense provided enough ball control and points for the duck in this game but it was really the defense in this game that kind of put the nail in the huskies coffin in the final night at husky stadium they really did uh, washington never had a chance didn't couldn't figure out where they were coming from and just way too athletic from oregon's defense and uh, the speed got to them also yeah we're talking quarterback pressure here and sacks early on brandon hannah fighting through a block yeah you see him right bringing from the outside edge here real explosive again Try to double him for a little bit, didn't work. And then one of your favorite plays, maybe not to happen to the dogs, but the twist from big Wade Kali'i Kali Kipi here. Really love this little twist in here with the big fellas, and uh, I tell you, he's a monster coming to the middle. Yeah, and then uh, second quarter, we see Wade up the middle, and he had a big night rushing against that Husky offensive line. Yeah, here, just see him just swallow everything up. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, and then in the fourth, you see Price really starting to dance around back there. He sees Taylor Hart coming, but there's Deion Jordan. Yeah, he's looking at it, can't see downfield, sees the pressure up the middle, then gets blindsided from the right side. Well, 12 tackles for loss in this game by Oregon. 12 for 43 yards. I think it speaks to the overall speed of Oregon's defense. It really does. And they're so aggressive and athletic that they, they can bring people from all over the field. Creates lots of problems for any offense. And they certainly did bring people from all over the field against the Huskies on Saturday night. Well, next Saturday, the Ducks have the big one. A clash with Stanford down on the farm. ESPN's College Game Day will be there to set up shop. But first, the Cardinal paid a visit to Corvallis. A rainy day at Reister for first-year head coach David Shaw. And Oregon State had one more up-close look at Andrew Luck and the Cardinal. The Beavers shut out 38-zip a year ago in Palo Alto. We go to the first quarter, and I guess he's human after all. Luck throws just his fifth interception of the season. Michael Doctor there, but the Beavers, as has been a problem, could not take advantage. Scoreless game in the second. Now Jeremy Stewart takes the carry, two yards and in for the score, puts Stanford on the board, 7-0 Cardinal. Still in the second, Luck makes up for his mistake. 17-yard score to Griff Whalen in the end zone. Stanford goes up 14-0, but OSU did respond. Very next drive, Sean Mannion to James Rogers. 15-yard score, he gets it in. His 18th career receiving touchdown, tied for fourth at Oregon State. 14-7 Cardinal. Now the controversial play of the game in the second, still 14-7. Jordan Poyer crushes Chris Awusu, scoops up the fumble and takes it back for the score. Would have tied the game at 14, but it's called back for a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Take another look, maybe questionable. That's the world we live in now with these hits. Mike Riley can't believe it, gives his headset a ride. Awusu loaded into the ambulance on his third concussion of the season. He did give the thumbs up. Third quarter, Beavers make it a game. Malcolm Agnew slices in for a two yard touchdown. His fifth of the season, that makes it 17-13. Cuts the lead to four. A little later, Oregon State driving with the chance to take the lead. On third down, Brandon Cooks converts and the Beavers are in good shape, but a holding call brings it back, and the Beavers had to punt Mike Riley incensed again. Then Luck went to work. 27-yard uh, touchdown to Stephen Taylor. The Cardinal go to score 21 unanswered to stay undefeated this season. Meantime, the Beavers officially will miss out on a bowl game for the second straight year. 38-13, Stanford dominated that line of scrimmage, rushing for 300 yards. Taylor with 95. OSU, on the other hand, ran for only a net 33. Yeah, in the air, Luck threw for 206 in those three scores. Mannion, not bad, 252 yards and a touchdown. Also, no interceptions for him this week.
But Stanford was really able to control the ball. Luck on the Cardinal offense on the field for more than two thirds of the game as Stanford's first two touchdown drives eight 12 minutes off the clock and it converted them three third down set third on third down seven times. Overall, the Cardinal 10 of 15 on third in the game and just extremely effective on first down two averaging roughly eight yards which set up several third and shorts. And the Beavers defense on the field over 40 minutes. Stanford pounded the ball on the ground 300 yards again. And five different Cardinal player ran for more than 30 yards in the game for Oregon State now. All you got to do is play the role of spoiler. You go down to Cal, one win away from making a bowl game or being come eligible. You can do that. You got the Huskies at home with the Huskies trying to go to a bigger bowl game. Knock them down a few pegs and obviously the Civil War at Austin too. Not to beat a dead horse here for Oregon State, but if you're the Beavers, you look at the problems here. Uh, once once again, you mentioned it, 19 minutes, 40 yeah. seconds time of possession. You don't, you don't have the ball enough against a power team like Stanford. Not going to get it done. 1.9 yards per carry on the ground. That ain't going to get it done. And then two for nine on third down. So sometimes the numbers don't lie. The call, that's right. The <laughs> yeah. culmination of all the problems kind of came together in this game for Oregon State. The Ducks remain sixth in this week's AP Top 25 poll, but now things get serious as they have the Cardinal and Trojans the next two weeks. Still to come on ITP, Oregon said so long to Husky Stadium, and they did it in style, dispatching the dogs on Montlake one final time. Me being my first time coming up here, it was, it was it really, it was hostile. It was hostile, but we dealt with it pretty good, and we just, we just looking forward to move on to next week, get ready for Stanford. Plus, look who's in the driver's seat in the South Division of the Pac-12. The Bruins moved to the top on Saturday on a wing and a prayer. And as always, lots more Beavers, Ducks, and the rest of the Pac-12 online all the time at our website, InsideThePac.com. We'll be right back. <laughs>